Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we're gonna to be talking about completing the square and more specifically, how we can solve by completing the square. Now I'll admit personally, uh, solving by completing the square isn't my favorite method. I find it a lot longer, more tedious than just using another direct solve method of the quadratic formula, but it is good to know how to, right? It is definitely a good thing to understand how to use this form. Uh, sometimes we will be asked on a test or something to specifically solve by completing the square. So I do want to go over how to do that. So the first step is to common factor out the leading coefficient, if it isn't one, from the first two terms. Now you'll notice in our first example here, we're going to be doing this example and then later we'll do this example here. But in this first example, the leading coefficient is one. And so we can actually just skip that step. Okay. Step two says to find the b over two squared value where b is the coefficient of x. So in this case, the b value would be negative four because negative four here is our coefficient of x. So uh, for b over two squared is equal to negative four over two squared, which is negative two squared, which is four. So the b over two squared value is four. Sorry, guys, I kind of covered that up, but that, there it is. Uh, step three is to add and subtract the value found in step two. So let's do that. We're going to have x squared minus 4x plus 4 minus 4 plus 13 equals 0. So essentially what I did, I just rewrote what we had up top, but I added plus 4 minus 4. And if we were to simplify that, of course, that would just be 0 in the end, right? And so um, that's why we're able to, to do that. We're allowed to add 4 as long as we also subtract 4. Or if we want to add 4 but to both sides, that is also acceptable. Okay, uh, step 4 says to factor the first three terms in the brackets and collect like terms. So in this case, there actually are no brackets, but there will be brackets if we have, um, if we do have to common factor in the beginning, which in this case we didn't, but sometimes we will, we will have to. So that's why it says in the brackets. And then we have to collect like terms. So that's what I'm going to do here. The first three terms in this case are just these three. I'm gonna factor them. They will factor to be x minus two squared and then collect like terms. These two terms here can be collected negative 4 plus 13. So that's going to be plus 9 is equal to 0. And now we have this in uh, vertex form. The great thing about vertex form is it's not too, too challenging to solve at this point. All we need to do in order to finish solving this, because these are the, just the steps for actually completing the square, here they want us to solve by completing the square. So now we've completed the square, we just need to solve for x. So essentially what I need to do is I need to isolate x. So I'm going to subtract 9 from both sides. We're going to get that x minus 2 squared is equal to negative 9. All right, so my next step is to take the square root of both sides. So if we do that, we're gonna get square root of x minus two squared is equal to the square root of negative nine. And keep in mind, we want the plus or minus the square root. We're not just looking for the positive root or just the negative root. We are looking for both in this case, right? And in general with quadratics, that is how they work. Uh, okay. Now we're also recall that taking the square root of something and then squaring it or squaring it and then taking the square root, those are inverse operations, those cancel. So on the left, we just have X minus two. And then also recall that the square root of negative nine is going to be, there's two parts of that. There's the square root of negative one times the square root of nine in there. Now square root of negative one is just going to be I, and then the square root of 9 is 3. So this is plus or minus 3y. And then our very last step here is we're going to add 2 to both sides. So we're going to end up with x is equal to uh, 2 plus or minus 3i. And so those are our two solutions, right? 2 plus 3i and 2 minus 3i are the two solutions here. All right. Uh, let's move on to the second one. So first thing I'm going to do is complete the square. So uh, what is the very first step in completing the square? Let's go back and review. It's to common factor out the leading coefficient from the first two terms. So leading coefficient in this case is 10. So I need to factor out 10 
from x squared and also 20x, like that. And in this case, we're lucky because the um, um, because 20 uh, has 10 as a factor, but even if it didn't, we would still factor it out and just end up with some fraction here because we need to force it out, right? We need to force whatever it is out, even if it isn't something we ordinarily would be able to factor properly. Uh, okay. Uh, next thing we're going to do is find the b over 2 squared value. And keep in mind, now that we factor the 10 out, the b value we're going to look at is the 2, not 20. Okay, so uh, 2 over 2 squared in this case, right? Because we have b over 2 squared, which is 2 over 2 squared in this situation, which is going to just be 1 squared, which is 1. Uh, so that's the b over 2 squared value. Uh, step 3 was to add and subtract that value. Right, it was to add and subtract that value found in step two. Uh, and also something I should mention is that we should do that within the brackets, right? So 10 times x squared plus two x plus one minus one plus five is equal to zero. And then our final step is to factor the first three terms in the brackets and then collect like terms. Okay, so what we're going to do for that is I'm going to factor these three terms like this, x plus 1 squared. And you'll notice that we only factored these three terms. We didn't factor this negative 1. So this negative 1 still needs to be accounted for. Now keep in mind, because the negative 1 is in the brackets, it must be multiplied by this 10 in order to leave the brackets. That's its exit ticket, is to be... Um, is to be multiplied by that 10. So, so often I see students write like something like this, negative one plus five equals zero. But keep in mind that's not quite right because in this case we took out negative one from the brackets without actually multiplying it by the, the uh, 10. So we need to multiply it by the 10. So we're gonna get negative 10 plus five equals zero. And then I'm just gonna collect like terms and get 10 times x plus one squared minus five is equal to zero. All right, uh, then I'm going to actually solve this. So let's add five to both sides to get 10 times x plus one squared is equal to five. Then I'll divide both sides by 10 to get that uh, x plus one squared is equal to a half. Then I'm going to take the square root of both sides and get x plus 1 is equal to the square root of 1 half, plus or minus the square root of 1 half, I should, I should mention. Um, uh, then we're going to subtract 1 from both sides and get plus or minus the square root of 1 half minus 1. And this is very close to the final answer. We're just, this isn't really proper form because we do have a fraction under a radical sign. And recall that we can't have that if we want to have proper format. So numerically, this is the, you know, this is the final answer numerically, but it's just not in, you know, fully simplified form is all. Uh, so let's change that. Let's change that so that it is x is equal to plus or minus square root of 1 over plus or minus square root of two minus one, and that is equal to just one over plus or minus root two minus one. And then I'm gonna multiply both top and bottom of this fraction by root two. So we're gonna end up with plus or minus root two over two minus one. And then this would be our final answer that is indeed in the proper format. So in this case, because we ended up with a positive rather than a, um, rather than a negative um, as uh, the number that was inside our square root, we didn't actually end up with any complex solutions, right? Because, you know, not all of them are necessarily going to have complex solutions. However, it is good to do some examples where you do, because sometimes you know, sometimes it will be complex solutions or sometimes it'll be real solutions. You just never know until you do it or until you um, uh, find the discriminant. <laughs> that is the other option to to figure it out a bit more quickly. Uh, all right. Well, that is it for this one. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those below and I'll see you for the next one.